Okay, we'll Kia ora, have the greetings from Aotearoa, New Zealand. My name's Lindley Hayes and I'm going to tell you about our projects in the Pacific. I would love to have been with you there in Rome, but as you can see, I'm about as far away as it's possible to get, being based in Christchurch. You can also see in this picture the countries in the Pacific that we're currently working with. My organisation, Manaki Whenua Lanke Research, has a team that's recognised internationally for its weed biocontrol expertise and innovation. In the past decade, we've been able to extend our focus beyond New Zealand to help our Pacific neighbours. This is thanks to generous funding provided by the New Zealand Ministry for Foreign Affairs and Trade. Pacific countries are heavily invaded with unwanted weeds, and we're currently assisting eight countries with 22 weed targets and exploring how best to support others who are now expressing interest in getting involved. I will share our approach and some of the key lessons we have learned so far. The use of natural enemies to control weeds is not a new thing in the Pacific, but most people are unaware of it. Since 1911, 18 Pacific Island countries and territories have released collectively 69 natural enemies against 28 weeds. There have been some stunning successes, such as the one pictured below with the floating weed Salvinia in Papua New Guinea, which thanks to Syro introducing a weevil was successfully controlled. And there's a great video you can watch there, Assault on the Sepik, to learn about this story. But despite their successes, activity fell away in the 1990s, and we're now in a phase of trying to rebuild. The Pacific Regional Invasive Species Management Support Service, or PRISMS, was set up by the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme, or SPREP, in 2019. It's aimed to improve Pacific communities' access to international experts to increase on-the-ground action against invasive species. My organisation was asked to lead a Natural Enemies, Natural Solutions, or NENS, program against widespread weeds. PRISMS is going from strength to strength, and you can learn more about it if you watch the video below. Countries requiring assistance go online and fill in a form. This form is then sent through to the relevant organisation who can assist them. So our approach is we do assist if we possibly can. We do this by providing independent scientific advice and facilitating conversations. What we don't do is decide priorities for countries or actions, although we may make recommendations. We have no vested interests. We have to operate at the pace of the countries wanting our assistance. This can be challenging for contracting because it tends to be quite a lot slower than what we're used to, for example, in New Zealand. We're patient, taking time to build confidence and get things right. We recognise the importance of face-to-face -face interaction, and this was brought home during the COVID years when we were unable to travel and had to rely on Zoom and emails. That was very difficult. We work to build trust through strong relationships and to empower others. This means we do an awful lot of training. Where possible, we build in-country teams rather than solo expertise. We're also working to build a Pacific NENS network. And you can see in the picture below, we were fortunate enough to recently have 70 people come from 20 Pacific Island countries to the Cook Islands. We were able to do some training with them. We follow and promote international best practice, including FAO guidelines. We're definitely learning all the time and having to adapt as we go. There have already been many setbacks with things like cyclones and other national emergencies cropping up regularly. And it's important to plan for these. And again, there are contract implications. If there are no or very poor facilities and infrastructure, which is the norm, or capability and capacity is very limited, we start with using natural enemies that can be direct released, such as the Lucena psyllid being released in Tuvalu below. We also need to understand the legislation and decision making processes and find ways to support decision makers who have no experience in weed biocontrol so the process doesn't stall at that point. 
We've done this by organising training on import risk assessment and access to other independent experts around the world who can provide them with advice. This has proven to be successful. We also need to assess social licence to proceed. There's commonly a perception that scientists and governments are not trustworthy. There's a lot of misinformation out there and many people won't be swayed by scientific arguments no matter how compelling or data sets no matter how large. People are generally unaware of previous weed biocontrol activity and are very surprised to hear that natural enemies are already controlling weeds successfully and safely in their countries, such as the psyllid here from Mimosa diplotreca or giant sensitive plant, which has been a very successful natural enemy in the Pacific. Ironically, when we are successful, it means sometimes there is very little to see and people over time um, forget that a weed was a problem or that a natural enemy has been released to control it. Typically, the first reaction when we talk about biocontrol is people bring up these guys, the ill-considered introductions of generalist vertebrate and invertebrate predators, none of which have anything to do with weed biocontrol, but we're constantly having to deal with this legacy. Community engagement is very important and we encourage countries to and get on with this as early as possible. But how do we get people's attention? And how do we make sure that all members of communities are able to be involved and benefit from weed biocontrol? This remains a challenge to be addressed. What are some key or useful approaches that we've found? Well, one is who are the influencers and the champions? Who are the trusted people? In this picture here, the guy in the middle is the one who listens to all the conversation and then makes the ultimate decision. He's the one that we need to impress. We also need to start with the big picture. Scientists love to dive into the small detail, but we need to pull out and talk about the big picture first. At the moment, a lot of people are very afraid of biocontrol, although there is no scientific basis or evidence to back this up. And they're simply not afraid enough of weeds. So we need to explain why weeds are a problem, what the harmful impacts are they're having right now, and what future scenarios look like. We've developed some scorecards where we show people what we think the magnitude of impacts are now against a range of categories and what they're likely to be in the future. We also find the invasion curve can be a useful discussion tool. People often think the status quo is what they will see in the future and don't understand that most invasive species are heading in the wrong direction up the curve. We also need to talk about the consequences of doing nothing. Sometimes for individuals, that's a lower risk strategy than actually engaging in something like biocontrol but the risks for many, many people down the track are enormous. We also need to talk about other control methods and whether they are appropriate or whether resources are being wasted in efforts that will prove to be futile. With this increased focus on impacts of weeds, we have developed a new resource to help people to understand all the different ways that weeds can cause harm and what we expect to happen with climate change, which means that weeds are going to get worse. This document's available from the SPREP website, and it also includes a section about the techniques that we use to help prioritise weeds to target for biocontrol. There are always so many, and we encourage our in-country partners to use these tools. The lack of baseline data is a real issue. Good data can change the narrative. For example, what was thought to be an early stage invasion of African tulip tree in Rarotonga, which is the orange pictures flowers in the photo, turns out when we get proper aerial photography to be a rapidly growing problem. Safety always comes first. The use of natural enemies to control weeds fortunately has a long, safe and successful history worldwide that is well documented in the catalogue. Biocontrol is a highly regulated activity contrasted with organisms which are self-introducing all the time such as the fall army worm, which is now invading parts of the Pacific. We need to tell, tell stories that people can relate to, such as the wonderful story about Salvinia in Papua New Guinea, or 
the monument to the St. John's wart beetle in the United States that was erected by grateful farmers. Sometimes people do have experience with highly specialist invertebrates, such as those who have maybe encouraged monarch butterflies in their garden or tried to rear them, and find out what happens when the caterpillars get very large and hungry and eat all their host plant and then can survive on nothing else. There's nothing quite like showing people natural enemies in the field, seeing that the natural enemies are staying on their host plant and are not on other plants in the surrounding area or on other closely related plants. But even live props will do, seeing really is believing. We need to tell the whole story. We need to ensure people's expectations are appropriate. Weeds will never be gone, just diminished. Not all natural enemies establish the first time and many release sites get destroyed for a variety of reasons. Results can be variable and take time to achieve. We need to tell the stories about all the natural enemies that we test and reject, even if we've spent years and a lot of money on them. We need to share our plans for post-release monitoring. People are afraid that natural enemies will be released and people will walk away and do no follow-up. This is not true. We need to share our results, including the checks we do for non-target impacts on closely related species and show that the agents are performing as expected. We also need to follow up on any false reports of damage. It's very important to engage with groups who particularly fear loss of a weed. Most weeds have some uses, for example, the African tulip tree is commonly used for fence posts in the Pacific, as shown in this picture. And farmers were concerned about that. We need to engage with groups like this who have something to lose, take time to understand their concerns and build a relationship. Then we can brainstorm options like, can we work together to gather data to support the way forward? Can we find alternatives? And in this case, yes, there are other trees you can use for fence posts that aren't invasive. Or can we assist even with other issues? And again, it turns out in this case, the farmers are really concerned about another tree and would like our help to control that. We need to provide suitable information and we need to keep in touch. These are some examples of some posters that we have developed that have been translated into different Pacific languages. So where to next? We believe that we are building some strong foundations now to enable the whole Pacific to benefit from natural enemies to control weeds. But there's much more work to be done and things to work on still. One of these is we need to tap more deeply into traditional knowledge and ways of doing things. At a recent workshop, we found that Western scientific terminology is just not used by Pacific communities to describe plants. They tend to talk about plants as being useful or not useful. This potentially opens the way to explore NENs for problematic native plants that communities are asking us for help with, such as Maremia shown here in Vanuatu uh, or Decalobanthus peltatus. So if you're interested in our work, you can follow us on Facebook at Pacific NENs. I'm also happy to, um, to answer questions if you want to email them through to me. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope the rest of the workshop goes really well. But just one more thing before I leave, a little plug please, hoping some of you can come down under in March 2026 to New Zealand for the next International Symposium on Biocontroller Weeds. It's gonna be a good one. Visit our website and sign up to receive notifications. Thank you and goodbye.